if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee Israelites, another chapter is needed to help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. There's so much that could be said to help you decode your dreams. Like the subject of witchcraft and idolatry, decoding dream symbols also need a series of its own. We will analyze a few more dreams in the scriptures to help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm, as well as what you could do to help you become free from spiritual bondage. A lot of Israelites are aware of the physical bondage through the manifestation of generational curses. However, not too many Israelites are aware of spiritual bondage. Religion plays a major role in keeping the Israelites and the indigenous black people bound spiritually. The beast system is controlled by witchcraft and idolatry. The scripture said in the book of Enoch that our downfall came because we learned all the abominations of the angels. And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the Satans and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery and the power of witchcraft and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth, which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. We were ruined because we learned all the abominations of the Satan's. Israelites, witchcraft and idolatry did not begin with the indigenous black people. The scripture revealed to us that the fallen watchers taught their sons and wives witchcraft. All the abomination known to mankind were taught by the fallen angels. The scriptures went on to reveal what each angel taught mankind. Witchcraft and idolatry is not a practice the indigenous black people knew until the fallen angels taught mankind this abomination. The seed of the fallen learn all of these abominations from their fathers, the watchers. A lot of people get the watchers confused with the angels that fell with Satan. The angels that fell with Satan are one group and the watchers that fell are another group of fallen angels. The fallen watchers were led by 200 angels. Azazel is one of the leaders of the watchers. He it is that taught mankind how to make weapons, as well as makeup and many other abominations. And Azazel taught man to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of autonomy and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. Thou seest what Azazel has done who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. Israelites, it's important for you to know who the scriptures are talking about. Because the workers of iniquity replace names with titles to confuse you, when you read the title Satan in the scriptures, it's important that you know which Satan the scripture is referencing. 
The Satan Gadriel is not the same Satan as Azazel. Gadriel is the Satan that deceived Eve in the garden. Azazel is one of the leaders over the watchers that fell. That is why I say the Satans. There are multiple Satans. The title Satan means adversary. We have many adversaries. When you know the targeted person, the scriptures will become clearer. Israelites, know that the root cause to our downfall is that we learn the abominations of the angels. A lot of indigenous black people wanted to possess the knowledge the angels have. Their curiosity caused them to lose the dominion given to them by the Most High. The scriptures revealed that Canaan found the teachings of the angels from previous generations written on a wall in a cage, and he wrote them down and never told Noah about the teachings. He called his name Canaan, and the sun grew, and his father taught him writing, and he went to seek for himself a place where he might seize for himself a city. And he found a writing which former generations had carved on the rock, and he read what was thereon, and he transcribed it in sin owing to it. For it contained the teachings of the watchers in accordance with which they used to observe the omens of the sun and moon and stars and all the signs of heaven. And he wrote it down and said nothing regarding it. For he was afraid to speak to Noah about it, lest he should be angry with him on account of it. As you can see, Israelites, our people have been interacting with the angels from the beginning. The fallen watchers taught their sons everything. The seed of the fallen continued to exist until today. That is how a population of people whose genetic makeup is nothing but recessive genes are dominating the original people that are made in the image and likeness of the Most High. All the abominations the watchers taught their sons are found in every generation. Today, the indigenous black people are reaping the repercussions of learning the secrets of the angels. The Most High said to his people on multiple occasions, learn not the ways of the heathens. The Israelites rebel against their God. The indigenous black people welcome and followed the seed of the fallen when they came bearing gifts that are laced with curses. The moment the indigenous black people accepted their cursed gifts and facade of being peacekeepers, the seed of the fallen colonized them, genocide some indigenous black bloodlines and assumed their identity. Today, some indigenous black people worship the seed of the fallen. Some are doing whatever they can to marry a descendant of the fallen. Why would you trade your glory for the lesser? The scripture said in the Bible, the most high made man a little lower than the angels. But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. The angels have the ability to operate in the physical and spiritual realm. The angels can transform their image to resemble mankind to walk among us. The angels that came to rescue Lot and his family before the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah confirm the angels' ability to transform. The scripture said, be careful on how you treat a stranger. You may entertain angels unawares. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Not only can the angels take on the likeness of humans to maneuver in the physical realm undetected, the Most High says certain angels over different parts of his creation. Every nation have a prince over it. There are angels that operate the Most High storehouses. There are angels over the elements as well as angels that control the sun, moon, and the stars. The angel series on this channel will guide you further on the angels who control certain aspects of the Most High's creation. The scriptures reveal to us that there are 300 angels that is upkeeping the Garden of Eden. And there are 300 angels, very bright, who keep the garden and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. Just because we're banned from entering the Garden of Eden, it doesn't mean paradise doesn't exist. Our true home still exists. Just because Adam and Eve are not in the garden anymore to upkeep their home, it doesn't mean the garden is not being supervised and maintained. The angels will continue to upkeep the Garden of Eden until the Most High redeemed Adam and Eve and the righteous of their descendants. Once the redemption of the righteous come, the Most High will lead Adam to the Tree of Life to eat. The tree of life will become food for the righteous.
And as for the fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment, when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It shall be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The holy angels are in charge of the Most High's creation behind the scenes. When the fallen angels begin to interact with mankind in a way that goes against their nature, that is when the original people begin to worship the fallen angels. The indigenous black people mistake their supernatural ability as being worthy to worship. Israelites, every god the heathens worship are fallen angels. The people who worship these demons utilize the powers these advanced beings have to manipulate and control. Demons crave worship. As long as the people bow down to worship them, they will give the people who serve them a false sense of security. Why on earth would Satan now say to the Messiah, all the kingdoms of this world I would give to you if you would bow down and worship me? Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Because the Satans crave worship, they will manipulate all who will feed their gratification and being worshipped. The Satans deceive the people who worship them into believing they can do what only the Most High the Father can make happen. The Satan called Gadriel manipulated Adam and Eve in the garden by promising them the Godhead. Satan manipulated some angels by promising them great kingdoms if they followed him. Satan cannot fulfill anything he promised. That is why he must deceive to get many to follow him. O oh, Adam, Ask him who deceived thee to give thee the divine nature he promised thee, or to make thee a garden as I had made for thee, or to fill thee with that same bright nature with which I had filled thee. Ask him to make thee a body like the one I made thee, or to give thee a day of rest as I gave thee, or to create within thee a reasonable soul as I did create for thee, or to remove thee hence to some other earth than this one which I gave thee. But, O oh Adam, he would not fulfill even one of the things he told thee. But when Adam heard these words from him, he said unto him, Canst thou make me a garden as God made for me? Or canst thou clothe me in the same bright nature in which God hath clothed me? Where is the divine nature thou didst promise to give me? Where is that fair speech of thine thou didst hold with us at first when we were in the garden? Then Satan said unto Adam, Thinkest thou that when I have spoken to one about anything, I shall ever bring it to him or fulfill my word? Not so, for I myself have never even thought of obtaining what I ask. Everyone who follow and worship the fallen angels are being deceived into believing the Satans can give them the desires of their hearts. The fallen angels have a way of manipulating mankind to worship them without giving them what they want. We have witnessed on multiple occasions people rising to power and when they exalt themselves over the Most High, their kingdoms fall and they lose everything. Lucifer wanted to be like the Most High. He declared in his heart he will exalt his throne above the stars of the Most High. He said he would sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The Most High said to Lucifer that you will be brought down to hell to the sides of the pits. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. The Most High don't play with his glory. Indeed, Lucifer was brought down to hell to the sides of the pits. Today he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for who he can devour because he's mad. He is full of wrath. Remember King Nebuchadnezzar? The Most High used him to remove his people out of his presence. As soon as he exalted himself over the Most High, his kingdom fell. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? 
while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The Satans cannot give you the desires of your heart. I don't know why people worship and serve these powerless devils. The Satans must steal from the righteous to give to the wicked. When the righteous lack knowledge, they unknowingly forfeit their possessions. A lot of people get robbed in the spirit realm. When you see someone take something from you and run away and you didn't reclaim it, that is a devil that robbed you in the spirit realm. When you see police officers take possessions of your things in the negative dream, that is another symbol revealing you've been robbed in the spirit realm. We all have seen celebrities who sold themselves to the beast system. They gain great wealth, power, and money. The moment they get tired of doing the rituals and stop worshiping the devil they sold their soul to, they lose everything before their untimely death. The only reason the other species of mankind have dominion over the earth is due to the fall of the indigenous black people. If the indigenous black people would serve their creator, the Satans and the other species of mankind would lose dominion. The Most High said in his words, I have given you power over scorpions and serpents in the entire kingdom of darkness, and by no means can they hurt you. Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The authority made available to his people only benefits the righteous who serve the Most High, the Father. There's a lot of Israelites looking to reap from the authority and power given only to the righteous who serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. You can't serve the idols of the heathens. In addition, replace the father with the Messiah that disguised himself as God in the flesh and expect to reap from the power and authority made available to the righteous. When you serve the Most High, the Father, you tap into powers that can move mountains. The power that Satans and the other species of mankind possess are temporary. The Satans don't have absolute power over the kingdoms of this world. The scripture said all of their possessions and wealth belong to the righteous. At the appointed time, the righteous will inherit their possessions. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The Most High appoint kings and dethrone kings as well. The Most High changed the seasons and does whatever he wants. The Satans manipulate men into believing there are gods to get the worship they desire. Because majority of indigenous black people cannot comprehend what is spiritual, they are easily manipulated by witchcraft and idolatry. Because many Israelites and indigenous black people have seen what the fallen angels could do through the power the heathens who rule over them have, they are fooled into worshiping the gods of the heathens to obtain equality with their oppressors. That is why so many protest in the beast system for equality. Israelites, I say all this about the angels because the fallen angels are responsible for teaching mankind all the abominations on earth. That is why all the sins of the world is pinned against the Satan, Azazel. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. There are people who openly and willingly worship the Satan called Azazel and many other Satans. Little do they know these Satans they worship and exalted are pleading for their life. They ask Enoch to pray for them as well as ask Enoch to intercede on their behalf with the Most High for mercy and the Most High denied them mercy and forgiveness. These are the gods the heathens and many indigenous black people worship. Yet these great gods, so many exalted over the Most High, are pleading for their life. Why would you forsake the Most High, the Father, to make powerless created creatures your gods? Don't trade your glory for the little gods that cannot do anything for you. Israelites, the time has come to put an end to the great sin of idolatry in our nation. And go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. 
And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, you have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you. And you knew worthless ones, and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women. And through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. And Enoch went and said, Azazel, thou shalt have no peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against thee to put thee in bounds. And thou shalt not have a toleration nor request granted to thee because of the unrighteousness which I has taught and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which thou has shown to men. Then I went and spoke to them all together and they were all afraid and fear and trembling seized them. Israelites, in order to triumph and over everything that is oppressing you, you must get to the root. The root to all your problems stems from witchcraft and idolatry, the fallen angels taught to mankind. Just as you heard in the scriptures in the book of Enoch, Israelites, a lot of your dreams are witchcraft related. Majority of your problems are witchcraft attacks. The beast system is powered by witchcraft and idolatry. The spiritual wickedness in high places engage in behind the scenes. Witchcraft is when humans use the powers of demons and unclean spirits to advance. The gods of the heathens are demons. That is why the Most High said in his word in the book of Corinthians that the heathens make their sacrifices to devils and not to the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The root to your oppression and everything that you go through stems from witchcraft and idolatry. Your dreams will reveal this to you. Many of your dreams are witchcraft attacks. Israelites, that is why the religion called Christianity brainwash you into accepting an idol as your Lord and Savior. It was important for you to accept the false Messiah that is supposedly God in the flesh as your Lord and Savior. When Israelites accept a false God as their Savior, the spirit of idolatry give the Satan's access to you as well as cause a separation between you and the Most High. Israelites, I will repeatedly say to you until you understand that our Savior is the Most High, the Father. Outside of the Most High, there is no Savior. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who is I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people? And the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. The Most High will select whomever he choose to work through to redeem the righteous. The Satans are passing down witchcraft and idolatry through religion and man-made traditions. The scriptures warn us about the traditions of men. The scriptures say we will put aside the commandments of the Most High to follow man's traditions. Albeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. The traditions of men are witchcraft and idolatry. The workers of iniquity perform witchcraft rituals in public and in private settings to obtain favor from the fallen angels they worship as gods. Israelites, the time has come for you to understand fully that the gods many people accept in worshiping the beast culture, the God that is popular among all nations, is not the Father, the God of Israel. This is why you must stop following the traditions of this world and what is popular with men. The wicked don't worship nor serve the Father. All who follow the God of this world worship the fallen angels and unclean spirits. 
Israelites, now that you know the root cause to all of your problems, you can now set your face against the devils oppressing your life through spiritual warfare. Israelites, when you know how to fight back, you will begin to see the manifestation of power in the physical realm. If Israelites take heed to this series and take control of their spirit in the spirit realm, you will begin to see the favor of the Most High over your life. The scripture said in the book of Chronicles that when the Israelites began to worship and praise the Father, the Most High set ambushments against the enemies of Judah. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Our ancestors during the time of King Jehoshaphat humbled themselves. They fasted and prayed. They began to worship the Father. The Most High gave them victory over their enemies while they were praising the Father and singing. Israelites, do not underestimate the power of praise. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Sometimes all it takes is faith and praise. After repentance, you will begin to see the most high sovereignty. Israelites, we will discuss further in another chapter about deliverance after the chapters on decoding dreams finish. Israelites, while the Most High is increasing your knowledge in the last days, utilize the wisdom you've gained to overcome spiritual bondage. A lot of you who take heed to this series and apply what you learn to your life will begin to see an increase of attacks against you. The reason? The kingdom of darkness and the workers of iniquity want to intimidate you with fear. The devils increase the attacks to discourage you. Religion has taught the people that when you're under heavy attacks and everything seems to be falling apart in your life, sin is the reason and you need to return to the Father. Israelites, that's not always the case. When all hell breaks loose in your life or all over the world like we're seeing globally, don't you dare panic. Don't allow fear mongering to disable you. Most importantly, don't underestimate the Most High at this time. When all hell break loose, this is when you need to take a back seat and watch the Most High fight for you. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Israelites, don't mistake the chaos for failure. When you engage in spiritual warfare and the Most High accept your sacrifice, world peace and love is the last thing you should expect. Spiritual warfare is war. You fight in spiritual warfare. Your opponents are the principalities and dark powers of this world as well as the unclean spirits and the spiritual wickedness in high places that the eyes of the flesh cannot see but are very active in the beast system. The Most High don't fight like the heathens war. The Most High don't need to come off his throne to fight people in the flesh. When the Most High command the angels that operate the storehouses that are reserved for war, the elements alone can destroy your enemies. We see the Most High respond with what the heathens call natural disasters. The Most High has his angels over his creation. There are angels that control the elements. There's nothing natural about wildfires, tornadoes, hurricanes, and other disasters that destroy nations and cause many fatalities. The time has come for you to recognize when the Most High is fighting for you. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble? For days of war and battle. When all hell break loose, praise the Most High. All who put their faith in the Most High and trust the Most High will be preserved. Remember, the population to the remnant is very small. Let the Most High purge the wicked. The population of the wicked is in the billions. The Israelites and the other indigenous black bloodlines are not exempt from the population of the wicked. If they serve the idols of the heathens and follow the beast culture, their blood is on their own hands. The word of the Most High said all the wicked of his people will surely die. 
Just because you see indigenous black people caught in the so-called natural disasters, some of them did not take heed to the warning the Most High sent to them via the spirit realm and the physical realm. In addition, a lot of people you know personally and care for are not a part of the remnant. How many of your family members and friends still follow everything the heathens does, despite the Most High exposing the secrets of the heathens? Israelites, wake up. Religion deceived many to believe that everyone goes to heaven. If everyone is in heaven, why is the road that leads to destruction massive? Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Israelites, don't let the workers of iniquity deceive you into believing when you're under attack, you've lost the battle. You're under attack because you won the battle and the devils are trying to find a way to put you back into spiritual bondage. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to stand firm and trust the Most High. I will share with you symbols you will see in the spirit realm that is a warning or confirming a matter. Israelites, there will be covenants established in the spirit realm that you can't control. There are events pending against your life that you cannot change. The Most High will show you in the spirit realm. When the Most High show you these things in the spirit realm, you have no choice but to brace yourself for what is to come. A symbol that indicate you need to prepare or confirming the matter. When the Most High does it twice or show you twice. Twice indicate confirmation. Just as the scripture said, it takes two or three witnesses to confirm the matter. This is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Jacob, our father, had a vision before the Most High gave him instructions on how he would multiply into a great nation. The Most High called Jacob's name twice. After calling Jacob's name twice, Jacob responded and the Most High identified himself. The Most High instructed Jacob to go to Mizraim. The Most High went on to tell Jacob that he would make him a great nation there. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. As you heard in the scriptures, the Most High called Jacob's name twice to confirm to Jacob that he should do what he asked of him. The Most High called Moses' name twice before the burning bush. The Most High did the same thing to Samuel. Samuel did not understand when the Most High called him. He went to Eli because he thought Eli was the one calling him. Eli instructed young Samuel on what to do when he heard his name being called multiple times by the Most High. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called to Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went, and lay down in his place. And the Lord came, and stood, and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. When the word of God came to Seth after the death of Adam, the word of God called Seth's name three times, then proceed to tell Seth that he would be with him just as he was with his father. When the Most High call your name two to three times, whatever he say to you, he will do. The scriptures in the Bible reveal to us about two dreams Pharaoh had that prophesied about the seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. 
And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. None of the magicians and workers of iniquity in Mizraim could interpret the dreams. The butler whom Joseph interpreted his dream when he was in prison finally remembered Joseph and told Pharaoh about Joseph. Pharaoh sent for Joseph to get the interpretation to his dreams. When Pharaoh asked Joseph to interpret the dreams, Joseph responded to Pharaoh just as I have responded to some of you when you asked me to help you interpret your dreams. Only the Most High can interpret your dreams. If the Most High want you to know, he will reveal it to the person he gave the interpretation. Israelites, only the Most High can interpret your dreams. You need to understand this. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Israelites, it's important that you understand only the Most High can properly interpret your dreams. After Pharaoh finished telling Joseph of his dreams, Joseph said to Pharaoh that his dreams were one. Joseph said to Pharaoh that the Most High showed him what he was about to do. Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kine are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. As you can see, Israelites, both of the dreams Pharaoh had were one dream. Joseph said to Pharaoh, because the dream was doubled, meaning revealed to him twice, the Most High has established the matter and it will surely come to pass. The time set for his dreams to manifest would be soon. Joseph went on to tell Pharaoh that he should begin to prepare. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. The words of the Most High confirm, when you see it twice, or the Most High does it twice, the matter is established, and it will come to pass. Joseph was wise to instruct Pharaoh to prepare. Likewise, Israelites, when the Most High warn you in the spirit realm by showing you twice, don't sit around and do nothing. You have to prepare for whatever is coming. A lot of Israelites in the awakening don't know if they should flee or stay in the USA. There are doctrines encouraging Israelites to flee. Israelites, what did the Most High say to you? Have the Most High tell you to flee? Let me remind you that you will find a devil everywhere you go. There are principalities and powers over every nation. There's not a nation safe from the wrath of the Most High. Besides, the Most High did say he would gather his people from multiple countries from all over the world. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Paphros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Israelites, listen to the Most High when he alert you in the spirit realm about upcoming events that is pending against your life. If the Most High show you twice, the matter is confirmed and it will come to pass. 
if fleeing to another nation is not an option, you have to prepare in whatever city and country you live in. The Most High will protect the righteous. Did not the Most High tell you when all hell break loose at the time of Jacob's trouble that your prince will stand up for you? When your prince stand up for you, you would be delivered everyone whose name is written in the book. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Israelites, the time has come for you to read the scriptures with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Everything you want to know, the Most High will reveal it to you. You have to do your part and know the word of the Most High to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Everything you need to know on how to walk in the spirit is in the scriptures. A lot of this information was hidden from you because of religion. When the Most High began to open the sealed scriptures, the people it was given to know the mysteries will see the truth of the Most High's words in the scriptures. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Religion wasted your time. The awakening is giving you back the years the locust that is in the form of religion have stolen from you. Take advantage of the wisdom. Another symbol that can confirm a matter and there's nothing you can do to change the outcome and all you can do is prepare when you see yourself crying in agony. This symbol was shown to me in the spirit realm when the Most High wanted to prepare me about my late brother. The symbol of me crying in agony in the spirit realm over my brother shook me. I didn't understand at the time when I saw it. All I know was that I had to get ready for some changes. I thought I had to help my brother get his life together and I started to help him. However, three months later, my brother transitioned to the afterlife. There was nothing I could do about it because it was written. The Most High alerted me in the spirit realm to prepare. These be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The Most High is talking to his people. His people can't understand him. Religion has blinded the eyes of many. The idols of the heathens has caused a separation between the Most High and his people. Remember, Israelites, you can't serve two masters. The fate of your salvation is in your hands. The spirit realm is not bound by time. That is why everything that is going to happen in the physical realm already happened in the spirit realm. I say it's important for you to know about the spirit realm. There are many other common dream symbols many of you have, like being chased in the dream by a mad person. Running away from people and being chased by a crazy person revealed that your spirit is malnourished. You need to feed your spirit to stand against the devils. A malnourished spirit can cause serious injuries. When you're feeding your flesh body, remember to feed your spirit with the word of the Most High. The scripture declared that man does not live by bread alone. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Israelites, there are countless other dream symbols. However, we can't analyze them all. The word of the Most High can help you decode them. All of the symbols we discussed so far are common and I gave you a general meaning to them. Some of those symbols have many interpretation. Spend time in the presence of the Most High to find out what they mean. Israelites, you don't want to wait until it manifests in the physical realm to take control over your spirit in the spirit realm. Utilize all of the resources the Most High made available to you. Always put your trust in the Father and he will direct your path. The Most High is making his words alive again in the awakening. Israelites, you don't want to pass on this great opportunity our generation gets to experience. This is our time. Let us build a foundation that the future generations can prosper from. The time has come for the people of the Most High to take heed to his words. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. 
neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and for thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee, she shall bring thee to honor, when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee.